Welcome, and thanks for meditating with Abide. For access to over 1,500 meditation sessions, download the Abide app for free in iTunes or the Google Play Store. Have you been disappointed by God lately? If you have been, do you lean closer into Jesus or away from Him during those times? Well, if you've lived very long at all, you've probably felt disappointed by God before. I'm not implying in any way that God was somehow at fault. He is perfect in all His dealings with us. But because of our limited understanding and perspective, we feel as if God lets us down sometimes. Well, that is exactly what two weary travelers must have felt 2,000 years ago when they were walking down the long, dusty road between Jerusalem and Emmaus on that first Easter Sunday morning. As these two travelers walked along talking about the disappointing events of the day, a stranger caught up with them. He was really not a stranger, though. He was the risen Lord Jesus. But the text states that their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. The Lord does two things with these men before he opens their eyes to see who he is. He first rebukes them because of their lack of faith, and then because of their lack of knowledge in the scriptures. So how do you respond when disappointed? Do you wish you had more faith and a deeper knowledge during those times? Well, join me as we meditate, reflect, and pray about finding hope in disappointment from Luke chapter 24, verses 6 through 7. But as we do, let's begin with a time of opening prayer. Dear God of promise and hope, I confess I am all too acquainted with feelings of disappointment. I know where my eyes should turn in those times, but so often I turn inward and not upward. Self-reliance and not you-reliance. Doubtful, not hopeful. But may you, the God of hope and strength, teach me to hope and be strong in you. And it's in the name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. Take those thoughts that are trying to distract you right now and just lay them out before him. Take a few deep breaths as we begin. Close your eyes and find a moment where you feel peace, a sacred space to posture and reset yourself before God right now in reverent awe. Is there anything in your heart that's blocking you today? Maybe an attitude or a sinful habit, some doubt. Confess that to God right now. And remember that He is a God of grace and of love and of mercy and forgiveness. God is the God of all hope. But what does that word mean to you, hope? Ask him to reveal it to you and to center you on a word or a phrase, a thought, or an image as I read from Luke chapter 24, verses 6 through 7. He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and on the third day rise. What stands out to you from this passage? Listen to it again. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day, rise. What word or phrase did you hear? Ask God what he is saying to you right now as you center on that word, that gift, 
that he just gave you. I love how the angel tells Mary and Mary to remember what Jesus said. Jesus did that too to Cleopas and his friend on the road to Emmaus. Jesus took them back to the beginning in Scripture so they could remember. What aspect of God do you forget most often? What do you wish you could more frequently remember about Jesus? Share your answer to God in prayer. With eyes still closed, listen again as I read from the Amplified Version of Luke chapter 24, verses 6 through 7. He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you, while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinful men and be crucified, and on the third day rise from the dead to life. What did you hear this time? What did you remember about the story that you might have forgotten before? Where did your memory settle? Take a moment to focus on that spot, center on it, and drive it deeper into your mind as you pray. Just imagine for a moment being there that morning, seeing Mary and the other Mary, seeing the Roman guards, the angel. Which aspect of the passage are you most drawn to? First, what do you imagine seeing in the woman's faces? Fear? Excitement? Hope? What about the guards? Fear? for a different reason? Ponder their faces right now, their expressions. Which of them can you most relate to? Express it to God for a moment in a time of prayer. Stay there for another moment. Now imagine what they would see in your face. Are you afraid? And of what? Are you excited? About what? Are you hopeful? For what? Ponder your experience at the tomb. What are your own emotions? And let your emotions become your prayer of praise and thanksgiving to God right now.
Listen one in final time as I read and you reflect on Luke chapter 24, verses 6 through 7. Jesus isn't here. He has been raised from the dead. Remember that while he was still in Galilee, he told you, the Son of Man will be handed over to sinners who will nail him to a cross, but three days later, he will rise. The day of the resurrection, he met the disciples in Jerusalem. Thomas wasn't there. He met with them again, and Thomas was with them this time. And it's then that he tells them to meet them in Galilee. That's a good two days' walk. Why Galilee? Why not Jerusalem? They were already there. I want you to settle into a posture as you ponder this. Let's begin on the two day walk. Jerusalem is in turmoil as word spreads about the resurrection. You are afraid that the rabbi you've been following for two years may be leaving, has gone, might be dead. Imagine that two-day walk to Galilee. What would your thoughts be? Fear? Hope? Take a moment and walk the road to Galilee. Imagine it. What are you thinking and feeling? Let your thoughts be your prayer. So why Galilee? Well, it's simple, really. That's where it all started. When Jesus heard that John had been arrested, he withdrew to Galilee. It's where he began his ministry and called his disciples to join him. Galilee was home base. It was comfortable, safe. So what is your Galilee? Where do you return for safety? What is your safe place? I want you to take a moment and go there in your mind and invite Jesus to be there with you. How do you feel with him there? Ponder it, experience it, and soak in it as you pray. So stay in your Galilee for a moment. Do you have memories of Jesus with you there in the past? What are those memories? Share them with Jesus as you pray. Don't let this experience end here. Stay here throughout your day. Linger in it. Spend time now in thoughts of thanksgiving as you remember Resurrection Sunday, as you remember walking to Galilee with thoughts of Jesus, as you remember your safe place in Galilee with Jesus. Let today be those times and those places. Be present with him now in moments of thanksgiving.
Join me in a moment of closing prayer. Dear God of promise and hope, I confess that I feel disappointed by you sometimes. In those times, open my eyes and heal me back into right relationship with you. Let me feel peace in casting out all my cares, all of my anxieties, all of my worries, my concerns, once and for all on you. Remind me of how you lavish your love on me, how much you care about me with deep affection, and how much you watch over every step I take so very carefully. May you, the God of hope, fill me with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of Scripture and faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit I will abound in hope and overflow with confidence in each and every one of your promises. And it's in the name of Jesus I will and do pray. Amen. We're almost finished, but not quite. Let the world around you slowly back in and open your eyes softly. Just take a stretch and look around. But hold on to that stillness in your heart for just a moment longer. Before you go, reflect one last time on being present with Jesus. Now, today, tonight, what can you do to hold on to that truth all day? I hope you're able to. And if you need to, you're always welcome to come back here to meditate, reflect, pray, and abide in Christ. We hope you enjoyed this meditation and that you come back for more. For access to over 1,500 meditation sessions, download the Abide app for free in iTunes or the Google Play Store.